Hello, so welcome back to The Boy Who Made the World Disappear and we're on to the third chapter. In the second chapter, remember Harrison was taking his balloon or his strange balloon home and a dog disappeared. Now Harrison thinks that it is not a strange balloon but is in fact a black hole. And by the way, all he wants to say hello. As soon as Harrison was safely inside his bedroom, he set to work. First, he tested what would happen when he let go of the balloon's string. Cautiously, he untied the knot around his wrist. Instead of floating up to the ceiling like a normal helium balloon would do, it hovered mysteriously in midair. Harrison was tempted to poke it with his finger, but Shelley's warning not to touch it rang in his ears. If it could really swallow a medium-sized border collie, what could it do to him? He walked around the balloon so he could look at it from every possible angle. He crouched down and gazed up at it, and stood on tiptoe, peering down. It looked exactly the same from every direction, a flat black circle. Like a piece of card had been cut out and stuck in midair. It wasn't round like a balloon should be. He noticed it didn't have a knot either. Whenever he got a balloon from a fair or a party, there was always a knot at the bottom where the string was attached. But this thing, whatever it was, didn't have one. Instead, the string just sort of vanished into the blackness. Hmm. Harrison was starting to have an idea of what his balloon might really be. He closed his bedroom curtains, switched on his torch and turned out the lights. He swished the beam around in the darkness until he found the balloon, which was when he noticed the oddest thing. Instead of reflecting off the surface, the torch beam seemed to disappear right into it. Harrison shone the torch onto a bowling ball sitting on his shelf so he could compare the two. But that looked round and shiny and, quite frankly, like a ball, not flat and completely black. Harrison turned the light back on and then crawled under the bed, rummaging around until he found the toy he was looking for, a fluffy grey elephant called Elmond. He and Elmond had never really got on, mainly because his fur was made of rough nylon fibre which triggered Harrison's eczema. Elmond would be the perfect test subject. Harrison took a deep breath and balanced Elmond in his right hand as if he were throwing a spear. He took careful aim, putting all his focus on his target, and launched the elephant into the air. Almond floated gracefully past the posters of stars and planets on Harrison's wall, and splattered against the side of the balloon. Now, you might think that being struck by a fast-moving toy elephant would have sent the balloon flying, but oh no, it remained rock steady. And that wasn't the most curious thing, because the instant Almond struck the balloon, the fluffy elements, elephant, seemed to freeze in time, and slowly, slowly, it started to fade until it became completely see-through. Harrison was sure that he saw the toy's eyes widen in shock before it disappeared completely. That proved it. Just as Harrison had suspected, this was no ordinary balloon. This was a black hole. Mm. Ollie's going. That night, at supper, Harrison had the opportunity to conduct further tests. True to form, his parents were trying to make him eat bro uh, his parents were trying to make him eat vegetables by giving him broccoli to go with his cottage pie, even though he had tried broccoli three times and most definitely didn't like it. Even worse, one of the boys in his class had told him that eating too much broccoli turned your hair green, and he really didn't want that. Harrison, remember the rules, his mother said. Eat all of your vegetables or no pudding. I don't want the broccoli, Harrison told her. It tastes like trees. Don't be silly, you love broccoli, said his father. Just try it, suggested his mother. I have tried it, replied Harrison, three times. Well, try it again, said his father. Harrison felt his temper rising. What if the boy at school was right? What if he went to school with green hair and everyone would just laugh at him? Just the thought of it made his eyes sting with tears. Why were they forcing him to eat something horrible? He wanted to lash out, scream and shout. He was just about to pick his plate up and throw it across the room when an idea struck him. What if he didn't? What if instead of losing his temper, he used his black hole? OK, he said innocently. I suppose I can try it again. And instead of growling and grinding his teeth, he broke out into the broadest of smiles. His parents looked confused at the sudden turnaround, but also relieved. At least their son wasn't going to have another cone red. Harrison picked up his fork and took a bite of his cottage pie. Then, while his parents weren't paying attention, 
and his sister Lana shoveled up her vegetables like they were the most delicious thing on earth. He slowly, slyly, took hold of the string and manoeuvred the black hole under the table where no one could see it. Of course, he was very careful not to touch it. After all, he didn't want to fall in like poor Elmond. After double-checking his parents weren't looking, he picked up a particularly unappetizing piece of broccoli from his plate and dropped it into the black hole. The effect was remarkable. Just as with Elmond, the moment it struck the black hole, the broccoli appeared to freeze in time. Then, after a few seconds, it slowly faded until finally it was completely gone. Harrison couldn't believe his luck. This is great! No more awful, disgusting vegetables. One after another, he snuck the pieces of broccoli off his plate and threw them at the black hole, waiting for each one to fade from view before disposing of another, until piece by piece he'd removed every bit of broccoli from his plate. Mmm, Harrison thought. This might come in handy. After all, there were one or two things he wouldn't mind getting rid of. Hector Broom's elastic band, for example. And that is the end of chapter three. I wonder what's going to happen next. Is Harrison going to get rid of Hector Broom's elastic band? We shall have to see.